My test tonight is a very simple one, um, which is only to welcome you all and hopefully make sure that you're all comfortable and ready to enjoy the next two hours or so. As we all know, Tambo and Mandela met in their early years at the University of Fortier. Of Fortier. That's where they first met as young activists and formed a bond that lasted throughout their lives. Theirs was a relationship that was so exemplary that it helped carry them through many years of tribulations and trials and happy moments. They were not only comrades in arms, but they became even family friends. And it is that relationship that we believe that we should never forget as South Africans. This year marks a very exciting year for the Tambo Foundation because had Oliver still lived, this is the year in which he would have been turning 100 years old. <clears throat> we cannot forget the sacrifices that he made for us. But more excitingly so, Next year, around the same month, it is the year that the Mandela Foundation would be celebrating Madiba's centenary. So I think their fate was written in the stars. They had to both be born from rural Eastern Cape. They both came from very poor backgrounds and both cherished education and the love for humanity and that carried them throughout all the things that they did in their lives. I'm so grateful for the role that I can play tonight because I'm literally going to be like I'm at Wimbledon. I want to give you the lion's share of the time to have your input, to have your questions asked. Uh, I'm going to use Greta Mantashe's words, words, robust is what we're looking for. And so, because otherwise we're not going to get very far. But I want to begin, before I introduce our, our panelists, and again, I'm, I'm starstruck because we have them here. We can, we can touch them and we can feel them, and that's really amazing. So thank you so much. Nelson Mandela had the heavy task of standing in front of the mortal remains of his friend and comrade Oliver Tambo to pay tribute and respect. And he said thus, a great giant who strode the globe like a colossus has fallen. A mind whose thoughts have opened the doors to our liberty has ceased to function. A heart whose dreams gave hope to the despised has forever lost its beat. The gentle voice whose measured words of reason shook the thrones of tyrants has been silenced. Peoples of the world, here lies before you the body of a man who was tied to me by an umbilical cord which cannot be broken. We say he is departed, but can we allow him to depart while we live? Can we say Oliver Tambo is no more while we walk the solid earth? Can we allow him to depart while we live? Can we allow Madiba to depart while we live? What were their leadership? attributes from your point of view, Lily, that really guided them? What they had in common was a mixture of traditions in leadership style. Um, and that included a traditional consensus collective decision making. Well, I think what they both had in common, one, integrity. Cast iron integrity. They were both very, very principled. Let me say, this was not peculiar to OR. It was there even before OR. It was there in the time of Lutuli. It was a tradition that grew up in the ANC. And it continued beyond that. So consensus making as a mechanism of decision making in the ANC should be noted. And it is a very important one because it tries to bring everybody together. And that is one of the hallmarks of the Tambo era. He lived and led at a time when our movement could have disintegrated like so many other movements around the world when they were driven into exile. He had a, mastered the art of gathering the people as a flock to keep them marching in step, even if that step was not as dramatic as one would have wanted at that time. And he kept us forward. The outcome of what you have decided to do as an organization <coughs> usually is different. And I believe that leadership arises in the way in which you react to the unintended consequences. Let's take Mandela. 
he was already one year in prison when he was brought to trial and the chief document was Operation Maibuya. They were facing the possibility of a death sentence. Mandela had not been there when Operation Maibuya was designed. But he said, I will take blanket responsibility for what we have done as MK, even for things that we did when I was not around. Take Tambo. Tambo's strength was that very cautious, very careful, would formulate a thing precisely. And it would be very, very thoughtful. 